So good um, afternoon, everyone. Great to have you with us on this webinar. And we are going to start now. So thanks again for joining. My name is Pavel, and I will be moderating today's discussion. I'll just make it full screen now. And I'm joined today by our experts on traffic modeling. Uh, this will be Jan Martolos from EDIP and from Plant for All Association. We have Karel Lidicka and Daniel Beren. Let me just say a few words on housekeeping. Participants are going to be muted by default, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat. Someone will be looking after the chat throughout the whole webinar. And also during the Q&A, if you'd like to speak, uh, please raise a hand. I would also like to let you know that this webinar is being recorded and I will be uploading the recording later today or, or tomorrow. And this is, this is the outline of today's discussion. After a brief introduction into the PolyViso project, we're going to listen to Jan Martos, who will talk about the principles of traffic modeling. After that, we will hear about uh, the tool, the traffic modeler, or tra Tramod for short. And Karel Lidicka will tell us a little bit about the concept and main features of this tool. And in the end, we're going to hear from Daniel Barron on the various deployments and use cases of traffic modeler. And after each of these presentations, we're going to have a short poll. And this is uh, to allow you as a member of the audience to ask questions on what you've just heard uh, and um, uh, get instant feedback from our experts. Then we're going to have a general Q&A and I will then conclude this webinar uh, with a few slides. So without further ado, let me start by placing this webinar in the context of um, a larger polyviso training program that we have rolled out. This is our third webinar and we're going to have one more webinar next month. As well as running this webinar series, we have an online course which is free to take and participants will get the certificate upon successful completion of the course. Uh, we will leave uh, a link in the description toward the end of the webinars in case you are interested. And also we have workshops, but unfortunately due to COVID, uh, our face-to-face -face workshops uh, have been placed on hold. Now, uh, more about the Polyvisa project. We are a Horizon 2020 funded initiative, and we are above all a collective effort uniting 15 partners from six different countries with uh, demonstration activities running in six locations. And uh, the case studies that you will hear about today, they will be based on developments in uh, these three places. Two of them are in the Czech Republic, Pilsen and Pantyszkowa Lazne, and there's also uh, the Mechelen uh, city in Belgium. And uh, the overarching idea in Polyvisio is that cities really need smart fact-based policy measures in order to achieve their objectives. Because oftentimes we hear about policies that fail to achieve their goals. And we can think of many examples. Uh, think, think about the Kyoto Protocol, for example. Despite setting very ambitious carbon emission targets over a decade ago, many cities, big and small, continue to suffer high levels of uh, CO2 pollution with knock-on effects on environment and health. Or if you consider another example from transport, for many decades, the prevailing thinking was that if you have a congestion problem, then you can address it uh, by adding more lanes. But um, uh, it only contributed to the pro uh, problem. By um, expanding road capacity, you simply add more traffic. So really, it uh, doesn't work. And what we need really is solutions that are based less on instincts and intuition and more on data, especially now uh, that we live in the age of uh, data-driven policy making. This is particularly important. The good thing about that is that we really have lots of data being generated um, every minute, thanks to all the IoT and connected devices. However, previous studies show that 
a small fraction of data collected is actually used and analyzed for decision making. And this is where the Polyvisa project comes in. We would like to help decision makers get the most of their data through advanced analytics and visualizations. And as policymakers experiment with um, data, they will be able to see the impact of different policy options on local traffic conditions, for example, and then pick the option that best uh, meets their objectives. And also policy visualizations, they're not just static maps. Um, the idea is to open them to the public and the public can see the results and uh, see how uh, the policy decisions affect their daily lives and provide this feedback for policymakers who in turn can make adjustments if necessary. All in all, this leads to more collaborative decision making that harnesses the wisdom of the crowd. This, these are the key principles of the Polyvisu project. And um, with this in mind, I would like to say that it's really not just some kind of piece of technology, but a new way of thinking and a, and a totally new mindset. What we did in the project is we took the classic policy making model where you have design, implementation, and evaluation stages, and we enhanced this policy making model with city level data, which comes from a variety of sources from social media to open business and government data. In our case, that you will hear. Uh, today, uh, this, this is mostly sensor data that is both historic and, and real time. And this data is then fed into the data pipeline, which includes data analytics and visualization components. And, and the tool that we will describe today, the, the traffic modeler, is part of this data pipeline. Traffic modeler is used by cities at different policy stages. For example, in the city of Pilsen, the tool is used in actually actually in all three stages, design, implementation, and evaluation. And in the two other cities, the tool is currently limited to just uh, the design stage. So now, without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Jan, who will introduce you to the principles of traffic modeler. Uh, Jan, the floor is yours, so feel free to go ahead. Okay, good good afternoon from me. And I would like to, to describe, to introduce how the basic principles of, of creating of, of traffic models are done. We won't go into too much detail, so, so don't worry about it. Uh, what is the traffic model? The traffic model is a digital twin of the of the real traffic uh, traffic situation in the in the cities. The models are created for the cities or for the regions or for the states. And the output from the traffic model, as you can see on the on the right side, there is a so-called cartogram, where the number of volume of, of traffic, number of cars, is in each, in each segment of the of the road is uh, calculated so this is the this is the traffic model uh, the principle of, of traffic modeling to, to create the traffic model we need to digitize the two two parts of the traffic model it's the road network and the so-called origin destination matrix the road network you can imagine the, the the real real street network or the or the road network in the city and in the computer you can code it like a like a graph where you can uh, you can see the the segments it's the part of of the street and the nodes of the graph the nodes are the are the intersections in in real in in real life the sections has the information about uh, how long is it or how uh, how much time it takes to pass from the from the one node to another and in the notes you can you can code the delay on the intersection or if some if some turns are prohibited for example the ter left turn is prohibited you can you can code it it to the model uh, to the model too so you have the road network and the second one you need the origin destination matrix the whole whole area of the of the city or of the of the area you are you are modeling is divided into into sections in this picture there is i think 20 29 sections and for the for the each segment to another segment uh you have to calculate using complex and and relatively uh difficult algorithms 
to calculate how many trips or how many persons wants to go from one segment to another segment, from each segment to, to another segment. Each segment is represented by the by the row or by the by the column and the matrix, and the number of in the matrix represent how many how many trips or how many persons wants to travel from segment four to segment eighteen, for example, and so on. So you have the route network and origin destination matrix, and then you can create the the traffic model. The traffic model is uh, is divided into into five steps. The step one is the you can code the you have to go you have to code the the network and the and the zones. So we have you have the network and the the, the zones. Uh, in which zones the the traffic is is generated. The second step is to create the uh, origin destination matrix. It means the matrix how many people or how many uh, how many trips wants to go from one segment to to another segment. In the third step, there is the modal split. Uh, we can uh, we can have not only the the one one mode of the of the trips the cars but we can have the the other modes the public transport for example bus train or something like like this you can do the model for the cyclist for the pedestrian and so on uh, usually on or in our uh, our example uh, there will be done only one model uh, model only for the for the for the cars, it's individual model. So these steps can be uh, uh, can be eliminated. In the four steps, uh, there is the assigning the, the OD matrix to the network. For each relationship, relationship from the one segment to another, there is looking for the shortest or the cheapest or the fastest uh, pass how to go from one segment to another segment. And for this, on this pass, the number of, uh, of cars or the, of the vehicles or the, of the persons is sent through, through, this, through this pass. And then you have the, you have the model. And like, like every model, uh, it's an important step, like in, in, in another any model. Uh, this is necessary to calibrate this model to the to the to the real situation. For the transport model, uh, the aim is the the the, the uh, number of cars which you calculated on the on the segments are nearly the same. Uh, the real situation: somebody is is going on the street and is uh, doing the traffic survey. So for for each car is 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 doing the the mark on the on the sheet, and uh, the calibration process means adjusted the parameter of the model uh, to have the the real situation on 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 the model. The the number of cars uh, which are calculated is nearly the same to real to real number of cars. And the output from the model is the is the cartogram. You can you can see here. So uh, this this was the shortly the principles of, of traffic modeling, and the traffic model can be can be now used for some analysis. It means the for what if analysis. If I construct the new road, how many cars will be go through this this roads and in which and other roads there will be, there will be the decreasing of the of the cars and so on if we build some new shopping center in the center if the capacity of intersection is enough or we can or we must uh, reconstruct this intersection to add some lines or the, the traffic lights put on the, in this intersection and so on this model can be used for the prediction uh, for example how the traffic in the city in the year 2050 will will be looks like for the emiss emission calculation on the picture there is the the emission model calculated from the from the traffic model for one city in Czech Republic for the economic analysis and and so on so this was the, sh the short uh, basic information about the to create the transport model and other speakers will show how this this static model will move on and uh, how we allowed to wide range of users to use this this model. 
So it's from my side, Pavel. Thank you, thank you, Jan, for this uh, interesting presentation. Now I would like uh, to ask our audience to vote and answer these two questions. First question, do you work with traffic models? And second question is, uh, introduction to traffic model principles, was it hard to follow, easy to follow, or way too simple? Uh, so I will keep, I'll keep the poll open for a couple of minutes, and then we will quickly take a look at the results and discuss them. Maybe, maybe in the meanwhile, if there is a question, uh, you can also type into the chat. So feel free to to ask. Yeah, absolutely. So I see that uh, nearly half of the people present on the on this call voted. It would be nice to have ideally to have a hundred percent people who are on this call and to hear from them. And it's all anonymous, by the way. Feel free to go ahead and vote. Um, maybe others are away from keyboards. We have twenty-eight responses so far, so I'll probably stop. Stop the voting now. And I will share the results. Uh, let me know if uh, everyone can see them. Karel, can you see the results? And Jan, can you see the results? Yes, I can. Yes, so can see the results. More than half of the people are working with the, with the model. It's a surprise for me. And I am glad to uh, that the, the follow the, the my, my presentation was, was easy. It's fine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Jan, um, we have a question from the audience. Uh, someone is asking if we are using multi-agent modeling or something else. Uh, sorry, I will look on the, on the questions. Ah, I, I couldn't see. Uh, can, can you tell us more, Pavel, what was the question? Uh, the question is, did you implement a multi-agent model or is it something else? Uh, so if you if you mean the multi multi agents, it's the same for the for the multi model model. So we in, in this project we didn't uh, didn't implement it, but in person we have the multi model model for the public transport and the individual transport. And the multi agent, if if you mean that there is more type of type of cars, there is a personal cars and heavy cars. So in in Czech Republic we usually have these three three types of cars. In, the, in our models. Okay, thanks, thanks, Jan. I hope uh, Valentin this answers your question. If there are no more questions and no comments, I imagine we can go to Karel, your part on the introduction to traffic modeler. Yes. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, hopefully, you can see my screen now with the webinar outline. We are here under the point number three, and uh, I will follow uh, what Jan just mentioned and show what we prepared uh, as an application uh, to actually present a traffic model in a more interactive way. So uh, I will go slightly to history in 2014, where uh, when we prepared such kind of uh, mock-up, uh, uh, in which we demonstrate that the traffic models uh, could react to some events, uh, hindrances, road closures, uh, whatever, on the road network. Uh, and it was a vision uh, that uh, we should be able to deliver such a functionality not uh, into the navigation application uh, as uh, a lot of people is used to, but to someone uh, at the city, uh, uh, from the city officials, whatever, so they can use it for managing uh, the traffic in the city, actually. So that was our initial idea. And before I start to talk about how it looks now, I would like to uh, mention this web address here. Uh, Daniel will be so kind to paste it into the chat uh, as well. And this is uh, this is uh, URL uh, at which you can uh, 
get a password for for some interactive uh, interactive uh, session at the end of the webinar. So uh, if you are interested, uh, follow the link and uh, then uh, uh, we will inform you about next steps later on. So now I'm switching to the current version of the traffic modeler. What you can see, I will see uh, in live demo as well. Uh, we are now able to explore and analyze past traffic. Uh, we are able to to inform about current traffic, uh, and uh, we also uh, are able to really uh, on the fly calculate a what if analysis of traffic. So if I close uh, a road, uh, what happens? Uh, does it have consequences to other road closures, or can these three roads, for example? As you will see in in the meanwhile in the while uh, if they have some uh, common uh, influence on the traffic then a city official can do multiple things uh, in the ideal world uh, he or she can decide to postpone some of the road closures uh, in the real world sometimes it's uh, more about uh, just uh, say okay the third road closure has an influence and uh, there will be probably next week when we are about to close the road there will be some problems on this and that uh, crossroad so we will send the police there uh, to, to to manage the traffic or whatever so it's a tool which can help a city official to 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 manage the tra traffic in the city uh, but uh, it's just a technical tool. Uh, there is a lot of tech, uh, a lot of processes which uh, has to happen to, uh, in the city to actually uh, implement using of such a tool in the city processes. So this is, by the way, something we are working on hard uh, together uh, and with strong help with our uh, colleagues from the city of Belgium. There is one thing uh, which is uh, worth to mention that for uh, calcula calculating uh, a what if analysis which has uh, relevant results and it's not uh, just a nice picture, we need to actually deeply understand the current and the historical traffic. Uh, in uh, our case, uh, we uh, worked uh, on that. Uh, based on on a sensors uh, traffic loops which are underneath the surface of the of the uh, roads uh, they're usually and primarily used for uh, for the traffic lights management but uh, we were able to get the information from uh, from that uh, sensors and uh, you can see that there was uh, maybe more than 100 100 of them uh, all around the pilsen uh, you can see the localization in the detail also and uh, here you can see some data processing uh, like from 220 millions of observation for uh, for one year uh, we gathered uh, an aggregated data set uh, hour by hour uh, with daily variations of uh, of uh, traffic uh, and this information we actually used uh, in the fifth uh, step of uh, traffic modeling what uh, Jan was talking about uh, during the calibration of the basic traffic model. So this is something uh, really uh, needed for, uh, if you want uh, to make the traffic model interactive, we saw that uh, uh, in that case uh, the expectations uh, of users from the traffic model uh, actually arise a lot uh, and uh, some uh, small problems which weren't that uh, relevant when you present the traffic model just uh, in a PDF or whatever uh, they arise uh, when you were able to interact with the model so the in our case the mod traffic model calibration was done uh, by a one-year campaign of uh, uh, data from traffic uh, loops. Uh, this is not the only data source uh, you can use. Uh, the other data sources are, for example, cameras which are recognizing license plates uh, of cars 
uh, there are some, of course, uh, GDPR issues, but uh, it, it can be anonymized, so that's the, uh, the other way. Uh, second, uh, let's say, um, uh, contemporary uh, source which you can use is uh, floating cars data or movements of uh, cell phones if you filter the movements which are done by, by cars. Uh, so this is also option to use uh, when you want to calibrate the traffic model. Uh, when we did that, uh, we think that our uh, traffic model is of a quality we can uh, we can present uh, uh, to not only city officials also you will see that we have uh, also information for for uh, citizens or public and uh, the traffic model which uh, daniel will present uh, uh, in a while is able and capable to explore and analyze the past traffic inform the user about the current traffic in the city and uh, of course uh, the main functionality lies in uh, the what if analysis uh, so for now we have the traffic uh, traffic volumes or traffic intensity analysis uh, we will demonstrate uh, an option to integrate the traffic model into an external system uh, our next plans are uh, working with the noise modeling plugin, uh, which will be done in following project, uh, Digital Urban Twins, uh, which is mentioned here. We consider also air pollution modeling. Uh, for uh, for maybe traffic expert, uh, I would mention that uh, for now we use the static tra traffic assignment uh, uh, algorithm for calculation of the traffic model and we plan to, to go for dynamic traffic assignment but it will uh, it will need uh, much uh, more fine data uh, to to calculate that so i think this is uh, all from me now and uh, pavel will switch to to the flash flash poll i guess uh, with some with some questions and i'm ready to answer yeah, thanks, Karel. This was excellent. Uh, let's let's ask our audience uh, what they think about the traffic models. I'm going to launch the poll now again. This will be a poll with a different set of questions. And hopefully you all see it on your screens now. Uh, in case some of you don't, it's, uh, it's a pop-up, so try to play with the windows and you can hopefully see it somewhere. Uh, question number one, do you find interactive interactive work with traffic models useful? Uh, there are some options there for you to pick from. And question number two, how would you describe the traffic modeler? Uh, so as, as last time, I will leave the poll open for about two minutes to allow everyone to cast their votes. Nearly half of the audience voted, so it would be great to increase this number a little bit. I see Levin is encouraging the other half to vote, but uh, uh, yeah, we know that there were some maybe technical difficulties, so we will see. Uh, David is yeah. writing. I see some the, people are struggling yeah. to see the pop-up, you know, unfortunately, so maybe they would like to vote, but for technical reasons, they're not able to, which is unfortunate. Okay, then we can close the, the poll at 56%, and I will share the results now. And I hope everyone can see them. So overwhelmingly, uh, we see that the audience found interactive work with, with the models useful. And then on the second question, um, many think that it's uh, similar to, to other products. Uh, Karel, what do you think about these responses? 
Uh, thank you for that. Um, well, it would be nice to 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 get also the feedback about uh, the particular product, but. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, if you can type them uh, into the chat, uh, we would like to hear hear about that. Uh, well, we feel our solution uh, quite different because uh, we started uh, uh, from scratch uh, on the client server uh, server uh, architecture and some of the tools which are used as Cube, Omnitrans, and uh, uh, PTV. At least partially, they they work. Uh, on uh, a bit uh, older technology, so uh, yeah, maybe there is some some advance, but it, it, everyone has to compare by himself herself. So yeah, thanks, thanks, Karel. Now, if there are no questions or comments from the audience, we can go to our third and final part, uh, which will be presented by Daniel, and this is going to be an exciting part because uh, Daniel has prepared some. Uh, hands on assignment for you if you like. So, Daniel, the world, the world goes to you. Okay, good, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Pavel and Karel, and welcome to the exciting part. Uh, it is my pleasure to start with that. Hopefully, not many things break during the live uh, demo. So, at the beginning, I'd like to start with the, with the pills and pilot. So, let's, uh, let's switch. Uh, right into the application. And uh, right now, what uh, you should be seeing uh, through my screen is uh, what is uh, accessible for general general public. So this right here is not a model of Pilsen. This is a uh, traffic of Pilsen as gathered from the sensors. Uh, so for example, we can look at the historical historical data and we can use this slider to, to move around the, in time. We can zoom in and see individual individual roads. We can click on those and see detailed uh, information about the traffic flow in that particular time. Uh, uh, you might have noticed that there are also some strange uh, data here. This is this approach is also good to spot uh, uh, errors in the sensors. Uh, so these are faulty sensors. This is not really something that can be fixed from the application. But uh, as you can see, you can very easily go through the days uh, and pick any given day and see how the traffic looked at that particular day. And for example, uh, see how some particular event influenced the traffic at that day. You can also look at the real time traffic. So this is not uh, uh, aggregated into one hour traffic intensity. This is every, every 90 seconds, uh, the volumes are are calculated and this is which is visible right here. So what we're seeing right here is uh, the traffic uh, that uh, is happening or was happening in the past 90 seconds. Uh, of course, the, data, the, the time can vary a little bit, but uh, more or less, this is the case. Uh, it can vary in, in a couple of minutes, for example. But uh, what is also accessible to the general public is the model itself. Uh, so this right here is what uh, the traffic in Pilsen looks uh, or should look like given all the different uh, constructions that are that are happening and that will happen in the in the future as well. So we can also look at the, for example, some particular dates in October, and uh, you might have noticed that the the symbols of the closures changed because they are all dependent on the particular time that I selected. Uh, the viewer can also look at the model without any restrictions. So we called it the base model. This is what the model would look like without any restrictions uh, on a normal Thursday in October. But with restrictions, it probably is going to look something like this. So the volumes changed in different places accordingly to the to the to the different constructions. So this is something that can that everybody in the city can can actually see. Now. Uh, how did this uh, model come to be and how do the uh, stakeholders in the city can actually influence this model and change the variables in it. So right now we are in the same application, but I have logged in and there's a new tab on the left that I can now see and play around with. So we can already see that there are some experiment, my shared public and traffic events. Uh, I'd like to start with the public event. So this is the traffic situation that is accessible to the general public. So this is the same stuff that we saw 
in the application for the general public. In the shared experiments, there are some experiments that, for example, some of my colleagues might have prepared and they are testing, uh, they're preparing for a new closure and trying to figure out how it will influence the traffic. And we can also check uh, my experiments, which is something that obviously only I can see. And right now there's only one, uh, one experiment with only one event. Uh, it's called webinar test. And there's a one event called Kotovska. This is a street that goes right here. And it's called Kotovska closure. And this shows the model of Pilsen uh, how it will look like, how it, how it could look like if we would close this road in both both directions. Uh, what we can now do is uh, uh, we can duplicate this uh, duplicate this uh, this experiment. We could have uh, very easily also created a whole new one by clicking right here and writing here the, the name. So we can we can. Uh, keep the new experiment three, doesn't really matter. I just wanted to show you that you can uh, either create it from the scratch or you can use existing existing experiments, which makes the workflow much, much easier. So let me now uh, change the name of the webinar test. Let's call it the uh, live test. And let's now go into the, into the experiment and we can add a new event. So let's close another street, shall we? So let's pick a street uh, in a different uh, region of, of Pilsen. We'll call it uh, Slovanska Closure, which again is the name of the street. Uh, I'm not being very uh, descriptive right now, but this is just for the purpose of the, for the webinar. And I will, um, I can also select the, the date because of course uh, the closure can be planned for a particular uh, time period. Right now, I'm only setting it to last one month and I'm setting it to closure, which means that the capacity and the street and the road will be drawn to, to zero. I will now confirm the setting and I will, um, I would like to calculate this, this model now and hopefully see, see the results. And and now I'm not sure why this is not uh, possible. <laughs> let me uh, let me do a quick uh, reboot of the, of the application. This is the exciting part. That's why people call it exciting. So let's wait for it to load load again. Switch to switch to English. And update the model. And we, of course, have to go to a date where I actually selected the closures, and there we go. Okay, so right now we're looking at the model of, of Pilsen uh, with, um, with both of those streets uh, actually closed. And uh, we can look at the, we can compare the different models by switching from the default one to the one that I just, uh, the experiment that I have just opened. Or we can use this compare traffic uh, feature this uh, compare map and we can as a ba we can as a base model leave uh, the so-called base model the default model with no no closures and for example now select the webinar test uh, webinar live test and now what we're seeing is uh, the road network with highlighted segments according to the difference between those two those two states of traffic so uh, not only the, of course, the areas around the each closure is, is influenced. We can, for example, switch into the webinar test with only one closure. And now we see that the, how is the traffic influence around the, the first closure at the Klatovska Street. But we can also compare those two uh, test experiments that I just did. So we can compare the, the webinar test. We are now right now using as a default, the one with one closure. And we are, for the comparison, we use the, the second one. So of course the hindrance around the first closure is now not visible because that's the same for both of these experiments, but we can very well see the impact around the, around the second closure. So this is, I think, a very interesting tool to, for you to play around with the, with the traffic model of the city and try to figure out what exactly will be the impact, what the uh, impact of the different closures will be uh, given the different settings. You can do the same for the historical data. Uh, it works exactly the same. So I can, for example, compare two different uh, two different dates 
And right now we're seeing similar visualization using two different uh, time slots from the historical data. So again, this might be very interesting, for example, if you want to compare to um, to different dates, for example, uh, uh, Monday with a holiday and Monday next week, and you can actually see how the people come to the city and uh, you can maybe prepare for that next time. Uh, so this is uh, almost everything from the from the Pilsen uh, from the Pilsen pilot. I would also like to inf uh, tell you something about how does the Superdia. Uh, this is the uh, the main Pilsen experiment with all the closures. Uh, how does it happen? Because uh, uh, any user in the Pilsen uh, that is logged in within the organization can now create a copy of the experiment and play around with it, but it will be very time consuming to always create the same event. So we have this uh, traffic event uh, superlative folder, which can be filled not only by the people within the uh, city organiza organization itself, but also by other stakeholders around the city. So for example, you have uh, the higher municipality that also owns some of the streets, you have uh, uh, some stakeholders that uh, care about something that's be below the street, like electricity or uh, water pipes, but uh, which also can generate some some closures, but the necessary should have the right to play around with the experiment. So they can create events, which then can be imported uh, into the model, verified by the users within the city organization, and if okayed, then they will propagate into the public uh, public version of the experiment, which is visible to the general public. Uh, let me quickly get back to my presentation. Uh, so I talk about Pilsen now, and now I will talk about the, um, the pilot in Flanders, for which I don't have a live presentation, but I have a few words and, uh, and a YouTube video. So uh, with Flanders, we, we integrated uh, uh, inside a different platform called Spotbooking, which is a application that focuses on um, uh, taking up of private of, of public of public uh, space, not just uh, that uh, involves some road hindrances, but other uh, other events as well. For example, if you have a public market and some other venue, but uh, of course some of these uh, events can influence the traffic. So uh, we decided we would like to test uh, how would the traffic model workflow look like if, uh, for example, some other application would like to use this uh, live prediction of traffic. So right now we're looking at a spot booking application and some user has uh, filled all the details and also selected the polygon of the area that they want to close. Uh, now here's a, a button called check traffic, check traffic with traffic modeler. And now the information is sent through API inside the uh, traffic model application, which is opened uh, with the Flanders, uh, with the Mechelen traffic model and also with a polygon already existing there that uh, shows uh, where the traffic will be influenced. The user within the traffic model can now select the roads that they actually will be uh, closed. This, is, this uh, looks like something that could be done automatically. It's not that easy because the, uh, the level of detail can vary within different maps. So right now it's, it's done uh, manually. The user manually selects which uh, roads will be hindered by the closure. And of course, as you just saw with the Pilsen pilot, uh, you can now calculate the, the, the effect that this closure will have uh, on the traffic within that region, which should, uh, should be done in a second right now. So uh, this is the same as you just saw for, for the Pilsen. Uh, okay, let's now move to the sandbox in Franciszko Vilaznie. So this is uh, why I inserted the, the link into the chat in the in the Zoom meeting. If you click that uh, click that link, the Bitly link uh, with a Bitly slash traffic modeler webinar, you should be able to see this page uh, right here. I will give it a couple of seconds, so you can get there actually. Uh, yeah, thank you, Pavel. Pavel just sent the resend the, the link again. Uh, so let's let's wait a couple of seconds, and then I will continue with explaining how you can actually play around with the Francisco Vilaznie traffic modeler demo. Once you get into this, into this document, uh, the only thing that you actually need is only the three links. So first of all, you will, you need the link for the application itself. So if you click the first link, you should get into a site that looks like this. 
but what you will need is you will need the credentials that you need to fill right here. Uh, you'll need the username and the, and the Hessler slash password. Where you will get those, you will need second link for that. So if you follow that link, you will get into, uh, you, know, you will get into this uh, Google Sheet, very simple. Uh, you don't have to pick from the, from the beginning. If you just wanna have take webinar 29, take webinar 29, this all work the same. Uh, just pick one of those login and one of those password and please just uh, click that you've taken that one. If two people take the same one, nothing really happens. You will just overwrite uh, your experiments and it will uh, make uh, the playing around with the model more difficult for you. So ideally, uh, one person should take one of these uh, credentials. And this uh, will stay open, we think, at least for a week. So. If you right now, for example, are listening from a device that is not uh, best suited for playing around with traffic modeler, uh, don't bother. You can test it uh, after after the webinar as well. So that the testing of the webinar uh, of, the, of the application is possible even after the webinar, uh, there is a third link for a, for a video on YouTube where I show how to log in into this Francisco Villazni app, application and how to create experiments from the scratch, how to create an event within that uh, experiment, and how to, uh, how, to, how to see the results. I will now go through it uh, very slowly, so you can follow up uh, on what I'm showing on the screen, and you don't have to see the video, but the video is there if uh, for some reason you cannot now follow or don't wanna do it uh, at this moment. So, uh, let me check the, the Google Sheet. If there are still some people that uh, are taking more, more password, I will give it uh, a second. If I will see that there is not much uh, traffic in the, in the sheet, I will, I will move on and do the uh, live demo very slowly in the Francisco Velazquez application. Okay, I see that uh, some people already have taken uh, some of the some of the credentials. Okay, I see one one more person. Okay, okay, I'll give it a couple of seconds. I still can see people coming in. Good. Let me start uh, very slowly. So. Uh, on the first page, uh, you just fill the credentials from the, from the Google Sheet. So I'm using the webinar OO and the LASN OO as a, as, a, as a password. You, of course, use uh, the ones that, you, that you've picked. And if you click on login, this is what you should be able to see. And the first thing that you can do with the default uh, model without any restrictions is that you can uh, move around the, the time slider on the right and you can see how is the traffic uh, on average is, uh, would be influenced by uh, hour by hour. And of course, you can also click on different, uh, different uh, days within a, within a week and see the, for example, difference between uh, Saturday and Monday, which of course is significant uh, in, in the traffic terms. But, uh, once you uh, test that, we can actually look into the more interesting part, which is the modeling uh, of Traffic Modeler. So I'm gonna open my experiments and this, uh, I'm gonna click my experiment uh, button and I should see a, a add a new experiment pop up below it. I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna create a new experiment with a new name. So let's call it uh, Webinar Demo. And you can leave the dates without restrictions uh, 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 checked. This uh, comes into play if, for example, if you have some variability uh, in time different uh, with, within different experiments, for our purposes, it doesn't matter. If I'm happy with the name, I can save it. And now I can either import event or add a new event. We are not gonna import any events, we don't have a name other uh, stakeholders here that would uh, feed the, the traffic event to support your folder. So we're gonna create a whole new event. So let's create a new event. Right now, the model should switch to blue. Uh, this is just for readability sake, so you can better see the, the, the model itself. 
and you know it with the different uh, colors for different uh, uh, different uh, capacity and intensity on the on the road. So I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to, for example, uh, let me first we can first cl uh, name the the closure itself or name name the event. So it's called just uh, closure one, and uh, I'm going to select uh, the two uh, roads on the on the highway, and I'm going to click on closure. You can also experiment with the with the custom sliders, so you can actually not only decrease the capacity but also increase it, which would translate to building um, basically building a bigger road or with uh, with more with different speed limit uh, right here or maybe with diff with uh, with different intervals in the traffic lights or with different lane with with more lanes. But I'm going to use the closure button so we can test the the influence of a of a closure on that on that model. And once I have that closure, I can click on update model. And within just a fraction of a second, I should be able to see the, the difference uh, that, that, that makes uh, for on the model. And I can switch between the default and the experiment one to see how does it compare. And I can also close a different road. I can add a new event. Uh, I, can, I can play around with it. This model is very basic. It uh, doesn't come close to the one that we have for Pilsen, which we actually uh, the, t tested many times. The quality of the of the parameters within that uh, road within that road network, and we also used many uh, real life data from sensors to to verify that our, that uh, the data makes sense and it is actually calibrated. We haven't done that for Francisco Villas, and this is just a simple sandbox for purposes such as this webinar and for purposes of testing new algorithms or development of uh, some new features for the, for the web application itself. So uh, this is all from my side. Uh, uh, we looked at the Pilsen application, which is the most robust that we have. We've looked at a small integration with, with, the Flanders, with a different application, this Flanders uh, spot booking. And you now should also have all the necessary information uh, that you that you need to actually try it yourself within this uh, simpler simpler model. So Pavel, I think that the word is now yours. Uh, thanks, thanks Daniel. Uh, maybe just before we go to the flash poll, uh, some people couldn't see things on the right hand side, the, the time slider and the calendar, and actually I happen to be one of them. Who just sees a black, uh, a black uh, vertical panel on the right hand side? But then Karel suggests that it could be something that can be easily fixed if we go to the anonymous window. Well, it, it actually didn't ha help. I tried that myself. Uh, uh, I don't know. We cannot identify the the, the issue right now. Uh, I'm facing the same same thing. I at least uh, tried uh, uh, very fast. To, to to check uh, that at least the modeling was possible, uh, but not going through the time slider. Um, to be honest, this is uh, this is probably the first time we uh, we uh, get uh, that many uh, concurrent uh, users at one time. So uh, we'll be, uh, we will elaborate on that uh, more, and if there are people interested, we will keep them uh, posted with the information. Sorry about that. Anyway, I'm I'm trying right now in the anonymous, anonymous uh, mode in, in Chrome and it works. Of course, that doesn't mean that it really there is some problem, but maybe reload, maybe uh, or some problem that was fixed. But uh, I, I, we will look into it definitely. Thanks for the comments. But I see Liman left a comment. He was able to do the modeling, uh, which is which is good. Yeah, the left panel was wasn't affected, but for some reason the right panel didn't work. Okay, and then we are going to have our third and last flash poll. I will launch it now. Just bear with me. All right, I hope that most people can see it. There are two questions. 
which will be found in traffic modeler features to find most useful. And it's a multiple choice question. And the second one is, would you like to use the traffic model sandbox that Daniel just demonstrated in the future? So I'll uh, leave it open for, uh, for a few minutes. Okay, half of our audience has voted, that's great. Maybe in the meanwhile, I would mention that uh, if there are some questions uh, after the webinar, uh, we are ready to answer them. Uh, if you go to trafficmodeler.com or if you contact the Polyvisu project, uh, we will be more than happy to, to, to answer your questions. Yeah, definitely. Okay, I guess I can close the polling now and share the, result, the results with everyone. And what do I have here? Okay, it looks like what if analysis appealed to the majority of people in the audience? And good, uh, good news to you, Karel, Jan, and Daniel is that people looks like uh, they they are looking to use the, the uh, the traffic modeler, perhaps a few days after the webinar. Were you surprised to see that the so what-if analysis received the highest number of votes? I, uh, of course, it's always interesting to, to see it uh, from a live audience, but uh, it, it's the same answer from, from me. So in a sense, I'm not surprised. I think this is the most interesting uh, part of the, of the application as well. I agree with the people. Okay, um, we're now into the Q&A territory. So perhaps uh, those people that uh, got a chance to play with the, um, with the tool, um, and they, they have some questions or comments that they'd like to uh, address to our speakers. So feel free to go ahead and jump in. There is actually a question in the chat, Pavel. Uh, the question says, uh, do you have access to the average speed on every segment? Uh, the answer is uh, no, not for now, because we cannot calculate it from traffic loops. In the traffic loops, we know that uh, know just the amount of cars passing the segment, but uh, we want to uh, get the information from floating cars data. Uh, which uh, is the data source uh, from which it can be uh, uh, derived. So yeah, we have plans for that. It's all question about available data. Uh, luckily now in Czech Republic, we have uh, another project uh, which is opening uh, such a data. So we are, uh, we actually already started to play with the data, but it's not integrated into the traffic model yet. Thanks, Karel. And uh, thanks, Valentin, for the question, by the way. And uh, Daniel, when you were, okay, maybe uh, we'll go first to Levan and then I'll, I'll ask my question. So Levan is asking, how did the fact that this is an open web interface influence the use of the software in Pilsen, in the city and uh, to the public? Uh, that's, that's important question. Uh, I, I, would probably need some help from our colleagues from the city of Pilsen. Uh, what is their opinion about that? Uh, uh, for, for the city of Pilsen, it will be licenses, licensed it as a, a software as a service. Uh, so uh, even the source codes are opened. Uh, we will uh, deliver the service uh, like having the source codes uh, source code running on the server with the data from Pilsen. Uh, 
so this is this is the business model, and uh, from the city of Poznan, it could be uh, seen as any other software as a service, I guess. But I know that uh, uh, they are looking for uh, for startup and new uh, new new innovative solutions. So uh, at least we at, at as plan for all and Edip and other companies working on that uh, in the Polyvisa project. Uh, that uh, uh, there is an added value uh, in having the source code open for for others uh, who would like to join or uh, use it uh, as well. Uh, we use thank... all or nothing assignment for root choice and assignment method. Yeah, there is one, one more question we, we skipped, but I will start with uh, with Reza's question. Hello, Reza, by the way. Uh, for now, we use the all or nothing assignment uh, uh, as a default uh, default choice, and we uh, we work uh, with other algorithms as well. Uh, but to be honest, uh, I don't remember that in detail. But if you go to trafficmodeler.com, there it should be somewhere. And if you give me like. Uh, Second, I will I will double check it. Uh, we plan in, in the in the future to use the, the, the dynamic assignment or the multi-choice, multi-pass assignment. Yeah. But the algorithms are in now. We are working on this algorithm now. Uh, the, the, there is one uh, version uh, which uh, we uh, finished, uh, and uh, it's. Uh, uh, product we hope ready for market uh, and we still uh, continue in development so uh, a lot of uh, ideas are under the development uh, it's uh, maybe the, the noise pollution related questions uh, uh, oh there is i see same with noise pollution but i need to find the first, uh, yeah, first one of it was, uh, when you mentioned the air pollution, uh, uh, David is interested in, in hearing more and where, where are you actually trying to apply this? Yeah, honestly, uh, what, what we have more elaborated is the noise modeling module. Uh, the air pollution is just an idea, so I will start with the noise pollution. Uh, we can, uh, based on some methodology, uh, Daniel can uh, tell the, you the, the, the proper name of, of that uh, standard. There is a way how to calculate the uh, noise produced by uh, by tra traffic. Uh, and uh, then uh, there is there exists uh, some French software called noise modeling, which is able to calculate it. It's open source. And we are now uh, in cooperation with the authors of the software uh, to connect the traffic modeler and their noise modeling. Uh, uh, together and uh, to be able actually to calculate first uh, some change in uh, traffic uh, and then uh, the corresponding change in uh, noise mod uh, noise uh, levels or whatever and we are looking for something similar for air pollution but uh, we this is this is not uh, elaborated that's just a vision and we need to find some uh, some time to work on that as well yeah, if, if, I, if I may add to that, uh, I, I, indeed, uh, the, the software that we are now trying to uh, use for traffic modeler with, with traffic modeler for the noise pollution calculation is called noise modeling. It uses the Knossos EU uh, standard for, for, for calculating the noise. We have done some tests on the, on the desktop side. Uh, so we actually calculated noise uh, pollution from traffic modeler data, but only uh, like I said, on the, on the static data from the, on, on the desktop. Uh, we have some visualizations in that regard. If you uh, want to know more, please write us an email and I will happily send you the, the visualizations that we've done uh, with that. And we are now trying to think about the integration uh, noise modeling that uh, it will actually work uh, on the server side as is with traffic uh, modeling at this moment. We're not there yet, but the, in the future we'd like to be able to see the impact uh, of the changes in traffic for different experiments also on the on the other phenomena as as, uh, as noise pollution or air pollution and not only on the traffic uh, intensities themselves
in the meanwhile, I have pasted uh, into the chat uh, a link with detailed information about the traffic assignment uh, algorithms we use. So this is an uh, answer to, to Teresa. Thanks, Karel. Um, I'm going to ask my question, which is less technical. And it, it popped in my head when I was looking at Daniel's presentation. Because, as I mentioned at the beginning in Polyvisio, the goal is to democratize data visualizations and make them more accessible to the wider public. So we try to move away from the strictly scientific developer GIS community uh, to policymakers and, and the wider audience, the citizens, who don't necessarily have the technical expertise to run all these models, but who have a need and an interest uh, in, 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 in this kind of things. And when I was looking at um, your presentation, Daniel, I thought to myself, well, what if I am an event organizer who wants to maybe run some kind of marathon in a city? Uh, would I be able to go to this tool and uh, um, make some adjustments and select certain parameters and see how my planned event may influence traffic? And then based on that, I could maybe perhaps adjust some of my, my, my plans for running this event. I'm no, I'm no technical expert, I'm just an event manager. So is this something that this kind of audience could use or would it still, in your opinion, be too technical for them? I think uh, it would be a good start. Uh, it is that that's my opinion, that uh, you, you can easily select the, the proper road segments and see the impact uh, on traffic but uh, this such event is very special and i think that uh, jan martelos would, would agree that there there is a lot more that comes uh, into this so for example you uh, have people that know in in advance that such event will be happening so they opt for a different uh, uh, different mode of transportation which of course influences the amount of cars within that road network so uh, it would give you an idea where some congestions might start, uh, but uh, I think that, uh, that it's not as simple as 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 you described. I, I would I would think this is this is a very specialized event uh, that uh, would probably have some some special parameters that are not so easily uh, calculated uh, you know, just by closing a couple of roads. Uh, if I may to add something, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, it's a complex issue, and we have this discussion with Jan and other traffic engineers. What is uh, uh, layman able to do in in such a software? Uh, because uh, if you tune some parameters, you you have to uh, know some concepts what what you are doing. On the other hand, uh, we try to to work on the graphical user interface and the workflows uh, to be uh, more self-explanatory. So we hope that in uh, in the next version of Traffic Modeler, which is now being prepared for 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 the uh, autumn, uh, we can have uh, maybe more more uh, graf more friendly graphical user interface with some explanation. But it's uh, it's uh, there is a, there could be a potential problem uh, with misinterpretation of the results. So yeah, that's what what Daniel mentioned. Yeah, this is the same like like with with other other models. For example, the model of spreading the COVID, everybody understand it and everybody has the interpretation, the clear understanding interpretation. But it, this is the bad interpretation of the of the model. <laughs> So the, the traffic model is a perfect tool, but you must know how it works and where the limits are. Thanks. Uh, it's good to see that it's becoming that, um, with certain caveats, it's becoming that democratic smart city tool that I think policymakers uh, and society in general uh, are demanding. Okay, I think we've been running, running for over an hour and um, I would like to quickly conclude our webinar. Uh, just by saying that um, in Polyvisio we've created this toolbox and Traffic Modeler is one of the tools that we included, included there. Uh, in this toolbox uh, you will uh, see many of the same case studies that were presented today 
and also lots of tips and guidance for cities and policymakers on how to implement the policy, what data sets and techniques to use. There we also have um, uh, the webinars, previous webinars, we published this webinar, the next one, also the online course that I mentioned in the beginning, you can find on the toolbox. And as um, Karel briefly mentioned, uh, Polyvisa will be finishing soon, in fact, next month, uh, but traffic modeler will be used uh, in a follow-up project. Uh, and the main idea there is to create a digital twin solution for several European cities. Pilsen is one of these cities and traffic modeler will be included in the ensemble of tools that will help Pilsen uh, uh, create the digital twin of, it, of itself. Uh, and the data sources that are being considered are obviously traffic, mobility, also noise and, and pollution. And uh, lastly, I would like to thank all of you for joining today's webinar. If uh, you have uh, five minutes to spare after the event, uh, please um, complete a short survey, which will pop up in your window. And this will help us understand what went well today and what can be improved in our next event. Uh, so thanks once again, and I hope you have a good afternoon. Thanks from my side, and I hope it was interesting for you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye.